whenever something awful happens or uh, there's some family tragedy or something, people will always say, how could God let this happen? Well, um, God lets it happen because he doesn't care. We anthropomorphize God, we make God into a person, someone who's kind of sat up there watching and uh, may or may not allow some dreadful things to happen. It's quite a cruel thing really to have that kind of image of God uh, foisted upon us, which we do by the religions. This idea that God is a loving, caring thing is totally nonsense. So I've decided to um, indulge in Spinoza's notion of God. And I've got a few quotes. So look around you, what do you see? I mean, you know, within a month or two there could be war in Ukraine. Hopefully there won't be because it will be truly tragic. Possibly thousands of lives lost within a space of days. Over what? Well, nobody really knows. <laughs> but um, the laws of nature allow this. And in fact, if you want to understand what Spinoza's notion of God is, um, to know God is to know the laws of nature. That's what Spinoza means by knowing God. Yes, Spinoza uh, was saying some fairly risky things for his days, which were in the uh, 17th century, sorry, 18th century. <coughs> and uh, somebody did try and kill him, uh, attacked him with a knife, because he was displaying the notion that God was a person looking after us and um, had qualities that we attribute to ourselves, things like caring and love and um, seeking for power, you know, whatever, whatever human things you want to project onto God, those things, those projections were made. <clears throat> If you, so if you want to understand God, you need to understand um, laws. And if you look around, you'll see <laughs> over and over and over again that the laws ensure that even the most heinous things are executed. Please for mercy and for some special deliverance. You know, in um, Stalin's day, I think Stalin is responsible for two, sorry, 20 million deaths. Each of those people, or many of them, will have made pleas to God to change the rules of the universe so that they could be saved. <clears throat> so when somebody pointed a loaded, loaded pistol at their head, then you know, they wouldn't die. Of course, they all did die. The laws of the universe. The laws of the universe have no regard for man. So, um, you know, you can't walk through a wall. There's a law of the universe. Physics says, you know, I'm not going to go into all of that, with the electrons repelling each other and things, but you can't walk through a wall. The law of nature, the law of physics particularly, say that that cannot happen. <coughs> you can't float above the earth at will. The law of physics, laws of nature, say that is the case as well. But you can slaughter 20 million people. The laws of the universe do not inhibit that in any way. So, um, I want to make a few quotes from Spinoza, or uh, use a few quotes from Spinoza. He's very clear on all of this. 
So, in uh, from his ethics, study Spinoza's ethics if you want to understand the nature of life. Anyway, um, it is from Proposition 33 in Part 1, for those people who are familiar with Spinoza. This view, which subjects everything to some kind of an indifferent will of God. There you go. God is indifferent. Nature is indifferent. It is indifferent to the suffering of sentient beings. Don't pretend it's otherwise. Massive suffering happens every day on a huge scale. And there are no exceptions to that suffering. <clears throat> if a lion grabs hold of you by the throat, you're dead. End of story. And that happened to human beings, you know, I don't know, tens of thousands of years ago. And even now, occasionally. This view which subjects everything to some kind of indifferent will of God and asserts that everything depends on his pleasure diverges less from the truth than the view of those who hold that God does everything with a good in mind. Well, of course God doesn't do everything with uh, the notion of good in mind because God is not subject to some external constraint or nature. You know, we can use the words God and nature interchangeably here as far as Spinoza is concerned. So, nature, why would nature be constrained to act for the good? You know, it depends what you mean by good. Good for what? Good for human beings? Well, I've already said that the nature operates according to laws, and those laws are totally indifferent to um, whether you get flattened by a 40-ton truck. If you step out in front of one, you will get flattened. The laws of physics and nature say that. <coughs> so, as Spinoza says, um, everything, uh, the view which subjects everything to some kind of indifferent will of God and asserts that everything depends on his pleasure diverges less from the truth than the view of those who hold that God does everything with a good in mind. God has no notion of good. God is the laws of the universe or the laws of nature and they just operate how they operate. There's no notion of good involved in there. So, we understand uh, nature or God by its laws, but those laws don't necessarily fit very well with us. And Spinoza has something to say about that. From his theological political treatise, you know, here's some truly profound wisdom. So, when something in nature appears to us as ridiculous, absurd or evil... This is due to the fact that our knowledge is only partial, that we are largely ignorant of the order and coherence of the whole of nature and want all things to be arranged to suit our reason. This is man anthropo anthropomorphizing the universe. We want all things to be arranged to suit our reason. Yet that which our reason declares to be evil is not evil in respect of the order and laws of universal nature, but only in respect of the laws of our own nature. Universal nature has no special consideration of human beings. So, as far as universal nature is concerned, or God Everything is fine and dandy. So the suffering of sentient creatures just doesn't register on the scale. So what's the um, what's the solution to this? I mean, if if all this suffering did register on the scale, then presumably God, as some kind of um, ultimate authority would change everything. But nothing does change. So either God doesn't care or isn't cognizant or the whole thing is um, the whole of nature is determined by a set of laws and rules. 
which have no special preference for human beings or any sentient creatures. So, how do we deal with this? Seeing as nature doesn't really care about whether we suffer horribly or have a delightful life, it really doesn't matter. How do we how do we deal with that? Well, it's very 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 simple. If you want to live the best possible life, you have to understand the laws of your existence. Things like the law of necessity, the law of resistance. There's several of them. And then you can start to live as far as it's you know, as far as it's <coughs> possible for human beings to live a pleasurable life. <coughs> we start to live a more pleasurable life once we know what the rules of the game are and how to live in a skillful manner. There's nothing else. Pleading to God will not help you one little bit, I'm afraid.